masakadale ne katatta ne anka hissa amodar afara yontak ngi hilo salama tanek sin tafay nam dankali hangit iya barnamij allen nakoy ne katatta namalai masakadale uksin arhibis nam Thank you, thank you, Ahmed. Uh, thank you, everyone. And uh, I'm really delighted to be part of this uh, uh, interesting and very useful seminar. Um, I was also very delighted to listen to Professor uh, Magnet and all the details that he went through, um, which are uh, very useful to this session, as well as to the whole uh, discourse on uh, the future of Ethiopia. So thank you very much for all this. And uh, of course, uh, to our uh, uh, colleague uh, Warren as well for the introduction. Um, my interest in the Afar issue is um, A, because I'm an Eritrean, so I feel very much an Afar, not an Afar friend uh, or a friend of the Afar people, but I am an Afar. I was in Asab uh, uh, when I was only one year old. So my father lived there for a short while and he established uh, very strong relationships with uh, Afar uh, politicians and business people. So we have that uh, attachment to, to the Afars. The second issue is uh, it's a nation that has been uh, divided into three countries, not by their own uh, choice, but by the choice of uh, external forces. Uh, and that is uh, Eritrea, Ethiopia, and, and Djibouti. And in none of these countries, uh, Afars have had any uh, rights respected. Uh, so it's a, a, a collective punishment of a nation uh, that has done uh, nothing wrong to anyone uh, of those who have been subjecting them for, uh, to punishment. So that is also the second uh, reason why I'm so um, interested in the Afar issue, and uh, I always uh, stand uh, in support of uh, Afar uh, cause, uh, whether it's in Eritrea or outside Eritrea. Ethiopia, of course, has gone through uh, some kind of transition that has lasted so far for 30 years. Uh, Professor Magnet uh, did mention the revolutionary approach uh, to the modern state uh, of uh, Ethiopia. Uh, but that is really the time when the TPLF, EPRDF took over uh, power in Ethiopia in 1991. That's when the transition started. And uh, this transition has not really come to an end. Hopefully with the uh, next dialogue, uh, things, might, uh, uh, things might change and uh, new Ethiopia might come out from this transition uh, to accommodate uh, its diversity. Uh, prior to 1991, uh, we had a unitary Ethiopia that was pretty much uh, established by uh, Abyssinian monarchs from the highlands, um, uh, which uh, an establishment that was based on uh, conquering and uh, taking over uh, lands and settling in those lands. And then, of course, uh, with the external agreements that they've uh, managed to sign, whether it was the Italian colonizers or others, um, they brought the modern uh, Ethiopian state from 1890 to 1991. TPLF and EPRDF had the choice uh, what to do with Ethiopia in 1991 because that's the time where changes would have been uh, eminent. Uh, and I feel and I believe, I think uh, the uh, choice to go for a, a federal state was the right choice at the time. This is 1991 or even 1994 when the federal constitution, the existing constitution was adapted. Um, there are people who would uh, uh, argue uh, that the TPLF, EPRDF um, introduced federalism to Ethiopia uh, either to hold the country together, which is what the purpose of federalism is in any case, um, or uh, to divide and rule the country because they wouldn't be able to rule it centrally as the Amharas uh, did before them. Um, 
both uh, arguments could be right. Uh, but in either case, uh, the importance was to redefine Ethiopia from the state that it has been uh, through from 1890 to 1991 to a new Ethiopia that would be uh, defined more of a composite polity, like a, a country that is multinational, multi-ethnic, uh, multi-tribal, multi-so on. So, uh, and, and I think that was a very important step for whatever reason the TPLF might have adapted it, but the step in itself, the constitution or the adoption of um, federalism was uh, right. That's my uh, uh, conviction. Uh, the constitution, of course, declared Ethiopia as a federal uh, republic. It recognized it as a state that is uh, composed of different nations and nationalists, as Professor uh, Magnet mentioned earlier. Um, it has also recognized uh, under Article 5 uh, the equality of Ethiopian languages, the equal status, the equal constitutional status of the Ethiopian languages, with Amharic, of course, as a working language. But uh, this, again, it was a new development within uh, Ethiopian uh, politics. And recently, I think there has been some discussion to even add more languages to the federal government's working languages. So I think Oromo, Oromo, Oromina, or Oromo, or, and uh, Tigrinya and others might be added uh, soon. Um, so this is another uh, step in, in the right direction that needs to be maintained if Ethiopia is to continue together. Um, under Article uh, 47 of the same uh, constitution that we are talking about, which was adapted on the 8th of December, 94, uh, the state uh, was uh, structured in different uh, regions or kalilis. And again, although there is a mention of nine states, and I think recently they've they become now 10 or 11, uh, but again, uh, this is a manifestation of self-rule, which is what, again, um, what federalism is about, to allow people and uh, different groups to have the right to self-rule. Whether that was implemented or not, of course, uh, it's another issue, but I'm talking just uh, or, or about the constitution as it is. Um, there is nothing or there isn't something that would worry you a lot uh, in its contents. It's got all the universal uh, human rights, the freedom to expression, freedom of thought, and all sorts of other uh, rights that are universal. And as a man-made document, of course, uh, there would be a need for some kind of uh, reform to that constitution, but not to go away from the federal uh, system adapted uh, in uh, 1994, 95. There are some provisions, of course, to accommodate some uh, within this constitution's uh, minority rights. Um, again, within the, the parliament, uh, which is, uh, can be categorized as the lower uh, house, um, uh, at least around 20 seats are reserved for minority uh, nationalities and peoples, which is, again, uh, another way of uh, engaging and including uh, minorities. The only uh, problem uh, which I hope uh, the uh, dialogue or the discussion will, will address would be the uh, upper house or the federal or the house of federation. Uh, in here, normally most uh, federal states adapt uh, in, in a bicameral system. They take the upper house to represent uh, all uh, the states or maybe the nation, nation, uh, nations and nationalities equally. However, in the case of the Ethiopian constitution, which is defined under uh, Article 61, uh, sub-Article 1 and 2, it does allow the majority uh, nations or nationalities uh, to have more representatives in the House of Federation. And uh, my argument against that was, um, if you have a majoritarian um, uh, situation in, a, in the lower house, then having another uh, majoritarian uh, status in the upper house, it means there would be a, a control of, uh, of majoritarian uh, rule, and, and that may not satisfy uh, many of the uh, minorities who may not have the numerical um, uh, status to, to have a, a say. So that's uh, one uh, issue that may need to be looked at at the, uh, the current uh, constitution that would need to be looked uh, and probably reviewed. In terms of the um, uh, discussion that is going uh, on right now, it's not so much about centralization or decentralization. It's very much, I think, about federal or unitary state because a unitary state can also become a decentralized state. So the centralization, decentralization may not uh, 
define uh, very much the, the discussion that uh, Ethiopia is entering into. Um, as I said earlier, uh, since 1890, uh, Ethiopia has been a unitary state. Uh, in fact, in many cases, uh, a very absolutist uh, monarchy uh, ruled by uh, monarchs who had some kind of like uh, holiness uh, supported very much by the uh, religious institution in the country. So uh, there wouldn't be any thoughts of uh, coming out against them, except that, of course, in the case of Emperor Hells, as it was uh, his uh, latter years. He was challenged by, by the army and then by students and other uh, movements uh, much later uh, in the early 70s. So, uh, but there is this uh, tradition. And I think uh, one of the uh, failures of uh, the TPLF to uh, lead on implementing the constitution that it very much led on uh, was this, this tradition of um, uh, centralized uh, rule of, of the country. Um, and and also, although Ethiopia was a federal in, in terms of the constitution, but in terms of practices for the last 30 years, it was very much a unitary state, in fact, a one-party dictatorship at one point I called it. So that's uh, how it continued. And, uh, and this is uh, the question that uh, those people who might think Maybe the TPLF uh, adapted federalism, not genuinely, but just to uh, probably uh, sideline the uh, challenge that could potentially or could have potentially come from the Amhara side. And, and therefore the uh, uh, theory that uh, this was about divide and rule uh, seems to be quite true. Otherwise, uh, there would have been more self-ruled rights within the regions, uh, as well as a shared rule within uh, the, the national uh, government. So, uh, but under TPLF, where none of these were in existence, and my fear is also this might this tradition might continue even under the current uh, uh, government. So, replacing one centralized uh, dictatorship or majoritarian uh, control uh, by uh, another, uh, although the TPLF might not might might have not been a, a majority in terms of uh, the people or the constituents uh, it represented. Uh, but clearly through the APRT, it managed the, to control the, uh, all the government organs. My belief is um, majority of Ethiopians, including from the Amhara and Tigrayan uh, communities or uh, uh, nationalities, would opt for a, a federal system. I'm not sure there is a stamina within Ethiopia to go back to the situation of uh, pre-19 um, uh, unitary system. Um, there has to be uh, uh, an understanding that this is not a country that is monocultural or monolingual or um, a country that can be ruled uh, just as a kind of like homogenous uh, society. There is diversity that needs to be respected and accommodated and managed at the same time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So, so the best way is really to uh, continue the federal system, even if it means uh, with some constitutional uh, reforms, but I don't see any problem or any other better alternative um, to this uh, system uh, if it is uh, to be a, a country that is composite and inclusive of all Ethiopians. Federalism will definitely help Ethiopia to stay together um, and it will also allow, uh, hopefully, if genuinely people adapt the system, uh, a degree of self-rule uh, and autonomy within uh, the regions, um, and also genuine uh, shared rule. Uh, to conclude, there are always talks when it comes to Ethiopian constitution about Article 39, the famous Article 39. No one would really ignore uh, this uh, when talking about Ethiopia. And I'm happy to shed some light on this one and uh, conclude my, my presentation. The first one is Article 39, uh, uh, it's about uh, the right to self-determination, including secession. So that means if any of the nations and nationalities of Ethiopia uh, want to, to leave uh, the union, they can do so legally, constitutionally. So I don't see any problem with that either, because after all, uh, union or any kind of uh, marriage has to be based on the free will of the people. And Ethiopia itself has not been established on the free will of the people. Uh, and that's why it needs this kind of um, approach to uh, maintain the country, but under a free will rather than 
the will of the uh, powerful uh, rulers, the rulers that have been uh, ruling Ethiopia for the last uh, 100 plus years. So that's one uh, important aspect of it. Second, uh, it also allows, if we are to talk about secession or the fear of secession, I don't think secession would be um, stopped by simply having an article on the constitution or not. Um, the only difference is that the constitution makes it more legal if people want to secede. Uh, but otherwise, if people feel uh, in secession there is a, a benefit or interest, um, they would use any kind of uh, methods to uh, uh, fulfill that ambition or that interest. Uh, and in many cases where there are no legal frameworks, the alternative would be uh, violence. So again, uh, even when looking at uh, the discussions that comes up uh, from time to time on the Ethiopian constitution, uh, Article 39 is always raised as, as a problem, but I don't see it really as a problem. Instead, I actually see it a, as affirmation of um, the free will uh, to stay united uh, as a country. And second, even if there is a cessation, uh, then there is a legal way to achieve that without having to uh, go through the uh, violence that uh, many countries go through. With that, I will come to an end and thank you very much for your listening.